It says that music sets the tone for mood. If you've seen any of those awesome Powers movies, or even the opening credits, then you've heard of a song by Quincy Jones titled, So Bossa Nova. So Bossa Nova. That's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. This genre of music was influenced by likes of big jazz names like Frank Sinatra, Miles Davis, and Dave Brubeck. Originally from Brazil, Bossa Nova was a fun fusion of the same altered chords found in American jazz and drum beats characterized of Brazilian samba. Literally, Bossa Nova translates to new beat, and at that time, that's exactly what it was. A new musical beat with a fresh style of music that immediately gained popularity and momentum with the Brazil's upper class. Initially, jazz in Brazil faced a lot of opposition from the upper and lower class because it reflected a carefree environment which, in fact, did not represent the majority of the Brazilian people. However, as more and more artists and musicians became familiar with this movement, it became more mainstream. The majority of the compositions speak of love, beautiful women, and beach living, rather than the reality most Brazilians faced. The Girl in Ipanema, which is probably Bossa most popular songs, both in Portuguese and translation, serves as a perfect example of the non-existing carefree lifestyle. Although no one person can be credited for the achievement of this form of jazz, much credit is given to Real Gimberto and Antonio Carlos Jobim. These men were sophisticated composers who worked to bring um, the jazz to a wide respectable audience. Jobim worked with American tenor um, saxophonist Stan Getz, which helped bring the rhythm to the United States. It is a credit to have begun in the early 1950s in the south side of Rio de Janeiro. This type of music is more commonly performed with a classical acoustic guitar and sometimes accompanied with the piano. Ironically, this very relaxed, mellow style of is associated with complacency. It's considered to be responsible for a not so complacent protest um, carried out through music. In the 1960s, the Brazilian people found themselves in the middle of a political uproar, uh, which led to the military coup of 1964. And so they turned to music to express their opinions and their beliefs, to share um, and educate the Brazilian population about their political, social, and economic status. After the 1964 incident, a new generation of Bossa was created, which made it totally different from the original. Instead of music about beautiful women and love, the music served a purpose. It had a nationalistic character, which was reflective of its somber roots. It depicted the plight Brazilians were facing and denounced the country's newly installed military government. This new style of bossa nova incorporated more Brazilian themes, making the use of Brazilian instruments and borrowing the zamba rhythm. Throughout all political turmoil, bossa nova musicians began writing songs with more of a political message, and some were even considered a guide of leadership in the manner of influence of Bob Dylan in the United States. After the coup of 1964, bossa nova was no longer a type of, of jazz exclusively for the upper class, but reflected the people of Brazil, all of them. Aside from having a great effect in the political world of Brazil, this type of jazz also played a large role in the geographical features of the country. Many street clubs, bars, were named after each bossa nova musician or bossa nova song title. In spite of their differences, both styles of bossa nova reflected the time in which they were created, one during a time of struggle, the other during a time of growth. Um, no matter whether you enjoy listening to this popular genre of music, there's no denying the fact that it had left a footprint on the world. <laughs>